Hey, Snacks, good to speak to you all. So I've come across a lot of buttholes over the last few days. Online, I mean, not... Uh, anyway, and I'd like to start with this particular standout. Notably, because it has an update, so there's a nice conclusion, but wow. At some point, you can't excuse procrastination. How do I inform, as a 29-year-old male, that this woman, who's 29 as well, that she is not my girlfriend? I am in a peculiar situation. This woman, we will call Rachel, is under the impression that we are in a relationship. This this has been going on for four years now. I have never asked her to be my girlfriend, but there was a miscommunication at some point. Oh no. Best he not do anything to encourage this behavior, right? Now, I won't lie, I played into it a lot, and I shouldn't have. I did all the couples things couples do, but I never asked her to be my girlfriend at all, or referred her as my girlfriend. I didn't stop her from calling me her boyfriend or wanting to celebrate our anniversary. In my mind, however, I was single. So when I hear her ask about marriage or moving in together, it makes no sense. I figured she would one day realize I never officially asked her and then realize it before things get out of hand, but she never did. See, everything was fine until about a month ago, I met this beautiful woman. There's this food truck that isn't far from my house. I asked her for her number and we have hit it off. Things are getting serious and... I'm going to ask her to be my girlfriend soon. Before I do that, I need to address the elephant in the room with Rachel. Now, oh, what a surprise. There's an edit needed. For clarification purposes, I was wrong. I'm remorseful and disgusted with my actions. I know people think I'm not remorseful, but that's not true at all. What I did was disgusting. So it becomes that strange question. Can you legitimately be stuck in a relationship with someone if you never acknowledged it as a relationship yourself? At least that would be the question, if not for the fact he didn't literally do everything that you do in a relationship with someone. As comments eloquently put it, whether you acknowledged it or not, you are in a relationship with her. If you found someone else, you need to break up with Rachel. If you try and pull a, oh, we were never together in the first place, so whatever I want to do is fine, you will be a major a-hole. Don't do that. Like, come on, it is one thing to be over a span of a month, but four years. For four years, you just didn't know how to bring it up. My God. But fret not friends, there is a happy ending. Well, there's an ending, as just a few days later we get an update. I took everyone's advice and broke up with Rachel, instead of saying we weren't in a relationship. To the criticism, I hear you and take full responsibility. My behavior was abhorrent and looking back at it, I'm appalled by my behavior. The food truck girl and I, we'll call her Liz, have made it official. I've done some serious self-regulation taking in everyone's comments, and I'm prepared to do better and become a better person. I've definitely become a better person in this experience and will use this experience in my relationship with Liz and also my friendships. As I reflected, I realized I can't change the past. All I can do is show a willingness to grow and learn. Spoken like a true YouTuber apology, making a bunch of promises to not do it again and likely heavily editing through ChatGPT. Pro tip, if you're gonna make an apology about this, spend some time talking about why what you did was appalling and horrible. What makes it abhorrent? Prove to us you understand exactly why. I mean, what do you think? It sounds like they're just trying to jump the gun with everyone calling them an a-hole and abhorrent and horrible. If he says it first, then there's no point of us criticizing him in that way because they already are aware that they are that kind of person. I know this tactic because I used to do it in high school. But all friends, I was far more pathetic with it. It was my tactic to avoid getting bullied. If I called myself a piece of schmidt more than they ever did, then they wouldn't bother bullying me with those words because I was bullying myself anyway. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why I had uh, self-esteem issues growing up as a result. Got a who, well, who could know? But we'll end things with this scathing armchair psychologist level of uh, roasting, I'm gonna have to say. Man, I would hope you got your bellies empty, ready for a good feast because this roast is gonna be filling you up. Do you know what the horrible thing is? You're not going to be a better person because you got the immediate validation from being with Liz and breaking Rachel's heart. And I'd be willing to guess Liz is younger too, isn't she? And you've told her an edited part of the truth. Maybe not overt lies, but definitely omissions to make yourself feel better and ease her into being with you because you know just how deplorable what you did was. You haven't done any of the work needed to figure out why you did such a horrible thing for so long and discarded her for a newer, younger model. You're going to treat Rachel as a lesson rather than an actual person and tuck this whole thing and what you did to her in the corner of your mind because you want to protect your self-image that you're a good person until you're forced to when someone calls you out 
for your stuff. Men like you are painfully common and give our whole gender the bad name that it has. And let me tell you my prediction of your future. This whole thing with Liz is going to fizzle out when the new relationship energy fades and when she starts to see the real you some more. You are going to check Rachel's social media, probably telling yourself that it's out of guilt and that you hope she finds someone worthy of her. But that's not the truth. You're looking for the satisfaction of being her last one. You want the validation of knowing that you've ruined her for future relationships so you can take the pride in never having to be compared. You want her to be left crying and alone forever so that you can come back and pick her up as a toy. You want her to be a backup option that you can crawl back to in case this thing with Liz doesn't work out. You're going to absolutely be ballistic when you do see her moving on. You'll try to brush it off by saying you're happy for her, but you know that you're not. You're hurt that she can move on because it hurts your small, sad ego. The discomfort is going to eat away at your insides and make things tense with Liz. Assuming your relationship lasts long enough for Rachel to reach the end of her grieving and healing stages needed after wasting four years with you. If it didn't end with her by then, it's going to end much sooner. You'll be left alone and bitter with nothing but yourself for company. And you know better than anyone how awful it is being with you. You'll treat Liz as another lesson in your life. Start to resent her for leading you astray from Rachel. You'll resent Rachel for having the audacity to move on. You'll probably get misogynistic, more so if you aren't already, start saying sexist slurs, and they will probably get into your vocabulary and inner thoughts a lot as you try to blame women for all your problems to protect your ego. But you know the truth. It's you. It's always been you. And as you fail relationship after relationship and your malice towards women as a collective grows, as much as you deny it, it's a fact. Could you get the help you need to make amends and be a better person? Yes. Will you? I highly doubt it. I've seen the end result of men like you. Dying bitter and alone, making everyone miserable because it makes them feel a bit better about the soul-crushing emptiness inside. Your only female company will be women that you have to pay to be around you, mostly service workers that you harass. If you make enough money, maybe you'll be able to get a trophy wife, but she'll resent her for not loving you and only being there for your money. But why would she? You know better than anyone how awful you are and unworthy you are to be loved. Best of luck with life, dude. You're gonna need it. God, I... Let me know what you think, though. I think as this comment says, the best remedy for this gentleman is to experience his very own same care and consideration that he has shown them. And now for a man who has the audacity to analyze his girlfriend's past, but then is shocked when his girlfriend compares her past. So the other night we are hanging out with our friends and I don't know how it came around, but I was poking fun at my girlfriend about her exes. Her last ex was a skinny guy and I pointed that out. He used to go to my gym. The guy is six foot one and maybe 160 pounds max. I'm five foot 10 and 200 pounds. But my girlfriend felt the need to tell me that how he would actually beat my ass in a fight because he's just that type. The kid used to be a bouncer, but I've never personally seen him fight, and he's a little guy too. So obviously I was mad and disrespected she would say that in front of our friends, so I offered to call him to fight. We argued for a bit and somehow I'm the a-hole in all this. She humiliated me as a man, or tried to. She doesn't see it that way. How do I handle this situation? Because she's mad, and so am I. So man has the audacity to bag about someone who isn't even there, but then completely loses his cool when someone has has the far greater courage than him to actually bag him out in person. Have you tried not behaving like a fragile child who starts a verbal spat with your girlfriend and then can't handle it when she fires back? Note specifically, he came around to start poking fun about her exes. Not singular, plural. So no doubt this was the girlfriend's final straw. She was sick of his schmidt and wasn't afraid to give him a bit of a dose of reality. And the whole offering to call him to fight. I mean... Hey, um, so I'm dating your ex now, and she reckons you could beat my ass, and c can you let me punch you a bit so I can prove I'm, I'm hotter? Please, bro, it'll be so much fun. It's absolutely detrimental to her finding me attractive. I can't change my behavior or anything because... That's what she's attracted to in the first place, yeah! Like, yes, continuing this same scathing comment, grow up, nobody's going to meet you out behind the playground after class. Like, this person wants to start a fight with a third party who has nothing to do with them and wasn't even a part of this in the first place. Now, this one's going to hurt your brain, get ready. My sister was arrested over something that wasn't her fault and I'm devastated. My sister's fiancé has been letting her use his car. My sister, 29 female, had his permission. That's important to note. 
out. My sister did not do anything wrong here. So the car was registered in the name of her fiancé's wife? What? I beg your pardon? When the wife found out about my sister, she reported the car as stolen. My sister was arrested over this. My parents hired a solicitor for my sister. He told my sister and my parents that since the car was not registered in her fiancé's name and it is not considered marital property in their pending divorce, which makes no sense because married couples jointly own everything, that the law isn't on my sister's side. I am defending my sister for seeing a man she knew was married. He lied to my sister that they were married in name only and had a dead bedroom. All of that was a lie. I don't condone her seeing a married man, but she didn't steal a car. Her fiance's wife filed for divorce after she found out about my sister. When she reported the car stolen, she knew the car was with my sister, but she lied and told the police it just vanished from her garage. We have no way to prove that, but she set my sister up. My sister and her fiance have both told the police that he, the fiance, gave her permission to come over and take the car. But since it isn't in his name and it has been confirmed it isn't marital property, the police are siding with my fiance's wife. His wife filed for divorce after my sister was arrested, claiming she didn't know my sister was seeing her husband. But she already knew and is lying. My sister's solicitor says they have a good case and the court is unlikely to be lenient with her. Even though my sister has never so much as been arrested, I'm so scared that she's going to go to prison over something that isn't her fault. I hate her fiance's wife for this. She is setting up my sister and lying, but I have no proof. So the fiancé slash husband lied to his fiancé or OP's sister about the car being his. She's now facing serious legal problems and they're still together. And OP is still defending this numpty and blaming the wife. I'm guessing the wife knew nothing about having a dead bedroom and imminent divorce. Yeah, it truly is fascinating that the OP here is, well, despite not condoning the affair, they are not at all calling out how must have, like, yes, an entitled prick that this man is to put your sister in this situation. I mean, your sister is scummy for encouraging a world where it's okay and normal to pursue affairs, but this husband is something else. It is hilarious how he is arguing about marital property and yet getting a divorce. My man, you can't keep using the marital property excuse when you are not trying to be married with this woman anymore. But still, do you think sister here deserves a little bit of sympathy still? I mean, I could kind of agree that, yeah, she was sort of set up. Maybe not intentionally, but she was just acting upon the trust that her fiancé gave her. Personally, I don't think that sort of person deserves to be sent to prison. They're not the kind of person that needs to be punished. Bit of a waste of our justice system, if uh, you ask me. But hey, let me know what you think. Does that ultimately not matter when someone's car has genuinely been taken away from them? I do have to agree with all these comments that, yeah, if I was in this situation and my car was taken, I would report it as stolen. Especially when I don't know the person who's suddenly taken my car from the words of another person. And now for Nightmare Roommate of the Week. Am I the a-hole for insisting on keeping an anthill in the apartment despite my roommate's objections? I'm 27 male and I share an apartment with my roommate Alan, 28 male. We've lived together for about a year and usually get along fine. Recently, I've gotten into ant keeping as a hobby. I've been reading a lot about it and decided that I want to start my own ant colony. I bought an ant farm kit and a queen ant with a few workers to start my hill. It started small, but it turned into several colonies and I was very interested and content. When I first shared my excitement with Alan, he immediately started freaking out about the possibility of ant escaping and infesting the apartment. He has a daughter who comes over on weekends who is allergic to ants and is terrified of them as a result too. I tried to reassure him that I had taken precautions to prevent any escape, but he's acting like I'm harboring a plague. To appease him, I moved most of the colonies into my bedroom. He still wasn't happy. He makes snide remarks about my unusual hobby that could potentially send his daughter to the grave. <laughs> what? Last night, he dropped the ball that if I don't get rid of it, I'll be forcing him to move out, which I thought was unfair because I can't afford rent on my own and he knows that. He says he's equally getting screwed over since he has to pay for his daughter and a whole new apartment. Honestly, I think he's still being unreasonable. These ants aren't harming anyone and it's my space too. I should be able to pursue my interests and hobbies without Alan constantly nagging me and making me feel like a piece of schmidt. Am I the a-hole? No, no, it's a totally valid hobby. You're allowed to express the things you enjoy, just like I I'm allowed to express my interest in pest control. Fun times ahead for all. But what's even better is the comments, and oh man, I'm gonna be confident here this is probably just a troll at this point, but man. As a comment asks, have you checked to see if ants are approved pet by your lease? You are not entitled to use the shared space for only your use. 
OP's response to this, they're just ants. Why would I need to approve it when I can just bring them outside if it's an issue? Ants aren't invasive. Now you might be wondering, well, what kind of ants, you know? And not every ants are bad. Not every ants have a venomous bite with them. So OP has jack jumper ants, carpenter ants, harvester ants, pavement ants, and black ants. And in case you don't know the severity of bringing these ants into your home. This is what carpenter ants do to homes. Man has essentially cast banishment of bond upon their rent agreement. <laughs> oh, and a fun fact, Jack Jumper and black ants can both cause anaphylaxis. So how fun would that be to also be allergic to them? Someone else found another comment of OP that even admits, I can't because I don't have enough space in my room. I don't want to get rid of my pets just because he doesn't like them. So he admits that they are not all kept in his room because he doesn't have enough space. Oh boy, what a wonderful full housemate who just litters their property and their hobby all over the place and then complains with someone who is sharing equally the space with them has the audacity to complain that hey i'd like to share the space too i think we'll just end it with this suspicious comment hell of a coincidence that he just happened to become fascinated with ant colonies a year into cohabitating with someone whose child has an ant allergy seems suspicious to me why not tropical fish or something Am I the a-hole? Super clingy stepdaughter. My stepdaughter is super clingy with her dad and me, but mainly her dad. She has to snuggle every night before bed with her dad, and this weekend, she wants a camp out in the living room where we put a mattress in the living room and all sleep on it, and I'm not comfortable co-sleeping with her. Something about a grown man spooning his nine-year-old disgusts me. All I can think about is how in the morning when he has a morning wood, how does that work? It's super inappropriate to me. When me and my husband met was the first time she started sleeping in her own bed two years ago. Every time I start talking to my husband or he starts playing with our baby, she will get in his face and start trying to get the attention on herself every time. It's like a game to her that he doesn't see. She will come into our room when we are trying to spend time together, just me and him, which we don't get hardly any of, and she will get in our bed and start sitting on her dad and getting under our blankets and saying, Snow it drives me nuts. Sometimes I want to snuggle with my husband without his daughter trying to take his time away from me. I want to spend quality time together and she needs her dad, but I also need some alone time too. And she doesn't respect that. Between work, kids, housework, our only time together is a couple minutes before bed. She is obsessed with being the center of attention and her poor older brother feels left out most of the time and now our baby misses out on dad because she always rips his attention away. How do I stop this? How do I tell them no about the camp out? How do I fix mine and her bond? Because if I don't start finding a way to help her with boundaries, our relationship between me and her and me and my husband are hurting. Again, it's important for her and her dad to bond and for her and me to bond and her and her siblings to bond, but she has to learn boundaries. It really feels like this woman was at first totally attracted to this man because he was a father and now that's the very thing she despises about him. Ugh, why can't this man that I've had a child with give less love and care to his child? Gosh, that would be so much more attractive. Like, yes, if Opie wanted a partner to give her his undivided attention, she shouldn't have married a man who is a single father. Also, it's absolutely disgusting how she's sexualizing her husband's relationship with his nine-year-old daughter. Opie is treating her stepdaughter like she's the other woman. It truly is astounding, though, that this woman can assume that because blood eventually pumps down to the lower ends of a man's body that it means he absolutely desires anything intimate and sexual with the nearest thing closest to him. Gives the energy of someone who thinks that just because you shove a rotten apple into someone's mouth and they salivate, that means that they like rotten apples. It's just fascinating how this woman either doesn't trust her husband being around children or has the even more ludicrous theory that his own daughter is attracted to her father in uh, what? It just, it makes no sense. Now imagine ruining your kid's future just to get laid. Would I be the a-hole 56 male for going back on a promise to my kids? Firstly, thank you for reading this. Going back and forth on this has eaten me alive and an outside view beyond my father will help a great deal. When I met my now deceased wife, she had already had a successful career and owned a home while I was struggling to find my footing in my industry. She helped to get me to 
mature and focus on my career more seriously. And eventually, I broke through and started contributing with the bills. Even then, she was making in the 300s while I was scratching and crawling to earn 50k. Well, eventually, we ended up having two kids, 19 female, 16 male, before she was diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer and passed away pretty shortly after that. She made me promise to pass the home down I was set to inherit upon her death. And I did so with zero hesitancy, not knowing what life would have in store. The kids were made aware of it because they were present when it was laid upon me. It was very difficult for me to lose the love of my life, the apple of my eye, and I think it blinded me from seeing how difficult the promise would be to keep. Four months after her death, I ended up shopping at a Kroger's when I met what is now my fiancé, 29 female. Who has three kids of her own. Who has three kids of her own. 10 male and 2 females, 8 and 4. We've been together for over 8 months and the discussion has come about moving in together. But she's wanting me to sell the house and buy a new construction together that wouldn't have memories of her around every corner. Which I completely understand. The two issues that are currently eating me alive are that the kids are extremely extremely upset that we'd sell mom's home. I paid some bills for too. And my father is worried that by selling this home to buy a new one, it'd mean I'd lose 50% equity if we separate in the future, which would mean my biological kids would only stand to inherit 50%, while my fiance's kids would inherit the other 50%, which I don't think the kids are aware of because it'd probably set off a nuclear bomb in the home. I broke the news to the kids on Tuesday about our plans, and they've all but ceased talking to me and have spoken pure vitriol on social media about me since then. But it hurts to see that because we need to become a blended family and they need to accept that they're going to have a stepmom and step siblings and money shouldn't get in the way of family harmony, in my opinion. Would I be the a-hole for reneging on my promise to my deceased wife and going through with the sale of the family home to ensure our new blended family can have a larger home to grow up in? So quite a lot of accurate speculations here. Some pretty scathing, but we'll read them regardless. You don't give a schmidt about your kids. You only care about this little gold digger who wants a sugar daddy to pay for her and her kids. She found a grieving sucker and is playing you. I mean, yeah, the dude has already hooked up with someone four months after who's half the age and you're already planning to just backflip on all the promises you made to your dying wife that would seriously, in this economy, absolutely screw up your kid's future. I do absolutely love, though, his defense for why he is okay to make this uh, decision on behalf of the entire inheritance. Because, well, folks, you see, you, you've got to understand, he paid some of the bills. If it weren't for him, his wife would have had to pay a little bit more than she usually did. Oh, I, I mean, life would have sucked in that household. What with his rich wife being an extra three hundred or four hundred dollars out for that quarter of the year. He basically owns the house now, that's obvious. And to quote this glorious ignorant of a reply from OP, this would allow my bio kids and future step kids to have a roof over their head even if I were to suddenly pass because I have no doubt my fiance would allow the kids to remain there for as long as they want or need. You mean like how you promised their mom you would keep their home for them? It truly astounds me how we can have this logic in society that women are the more emotionally reactive ones when this, I, I swear you always hear about this with some men and how like this crazy love bombing romantic behavior they have in this regard. Dude is willing to throw out his entire previous family, not even previous, his current family, just to prove to this other woman that he is keen on her. It's Oh boy, is that a fair assessment to make here? Let me know what you think below. As always, I do love your input. So uh, with that said, we will end today's video here though. Thank you as always for watching. I appreciate you ducking in to say hello, despite my obviously totally frequent uploads. Anyway, you'll be good. And until next time, hopefully soon, I'll see you then. Love ya. Drink water. Bye.